Hey guys, Brian Otto here with a new Titanfall 2 movement tutorial for 2020 and beyond. I want to stress that this is an advanced movement tutorial that assumes you're at least somewhat familiar with the movement mechanics of the game. And if you haven't, I highly recommend watching my standard movement tutorial, which will be linked in the description. We're going to be moving pretty fast here, so please leave any questions in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first bit of tech that we're going to cover is what's called a spring jump. Uh, generally speaking, when you want the maximum vertical distance from a double jump, you want to jump at the apex of your first jump. There's a considerable distance between two quick jump inputs and a double jump that is timed at the apex of the first jump. However, if you do two tick perfect jump inputs in quick succession, you'll achieve a height that is generally unreachable via a standard double jump. For this specifically, I recommend binding two different jump inputs. Uh, I have one bound to my spacebar and one to a mouse button. This is because it is nearly impossible to do a spring jump with a single jump input without using two separate fingers or hands. Uh, the difficulty in a spring jump comes from the fact that there is zero input buffer in Titanfall 2, which means that your inputs cannot overlap. Spring jumping is still a very new and very niche piece of tech, but I expect to see it find uses through the run as the game evolves over the course of the next few years. Next up, we have what is known as a forced end boost. Uh, this tech allows us to achieve an end boost without having to wait for the wall run timer to expire. Uh, forced end boosts are performed by holding away from the wall as you're running on it and timing a jump. Uh, after you execute the away input from the wall, there will be a brief period where you're still stuck to the wall. You can think of this period as what has been historically known in gaming as coyote time, except in this context, we're falling from a wall run, not running off a ledge. When you do a jump during this period, you'll get an end boost, and the amount of boost that you get is going to be dependent on when you press jump after pressing the away input. So the later that you time the jump, the more boost you will get. Uh, you do have to be very careful with the forced end boost though, because if you jump too late, you will instantly eat your double jump and lose all your speed, of course. As opposed to something like a spring jump, uh, forced end boosting has a lot of applications that you can use right now, especially in categories like all helmets. Uh, it is definitely something that I recommend learning immediately, as it's pretty easy and the results are very noticeable. The rest of this tutorial is going to largely revolve around what is known as strafe lurch. Strafe lurching occurs when you press a strafe input a half second or 30 ticks after jumping. And as a quick side note before we continue, you cannot do this on controller. Controller uses analog inputs to move in this game, and with analog inputs there is no strafe lurch, and we'll come back to that later. The amount of lurch that you incur is directly tied to how soon you input the strafe input after jumping. So you will incur much more lurch when you do a strafe right after jumping versus when you do a strafe about 0.4 seconds after jumping, for example. And lurch is everywhere. You will experience lurch when you do double jumps, wall jumps, uh, if you when you jump from the ground and then do a strafe input, uh, lurch happens all over the place. And we can exploit this. Enter tap strafing. Tap strafing takes advantage of strafe lurch by rapidly tapping W after a jump while strafing in a direction, allowing for sharp and quick turns with minimal speed loss. This is important because unlike other Source Engine games, Titanfall 2 has a very low base air acceleration value, which means that we can't turn quickly via standard strafing without basically coming to a complete stop. Uh, with tap strafing, we no longer have this issue. To properly tap strafe, you begin strafing in a direction and tap W or forward while still holding your strafe key. You'll immediately notice the lurch, and the more times that you can tap forward within a 30 tick window, the tighter and faster turns you can get. And I cannot stress how important it is to be good at tap strafing. Tap strafing has uses and applications literally everywhere in Titanfall 2. It is one of the main reasons that keyboard is the superior input method for Titanfall 2. Next we have Tap Strafing's crazy, erratic little brother, uh, Fizzy Strafing. Fizzy Strafing, which is named after the runner who originally implemented it, is similar to Tap Strafing in that you're stacking, quote unquote, strafe lurches by tapping a directional key, but it does so without a W input. The speed loss you incur with Fizzy Strafing is greater, but it does allow for more erratic and sharp movement. To perform a Fizzy Strafe, you simply tap an input direction as quickly as you can after a jump to generate multiple strafe lurches. Fizzy strafing is considerably more niche than tap strafing, but it does have its uses, particularly in very high speed scenarios, like the laser boost inside Hell Room. Generally speaking though, anything you can do with fizzy strafing, you can accomplish with tap strafing as well. You may find one method easier than another for certain strats. So we've talked a lot about the benefits of strafe lurch, but what about the downsides? 
Stray Flurge is very much a double-edged sword. Uh, when you incur Stray Flurge, you'll lose speed, and any loss in speed means you're also traveling less distance. Stray Flurge becomes very tricky when you want to move smoothly over a long distance, or when you need to clear a large gap during a skip like Heat Sink or Kill Room. At this point, it's worth mentioning again that Controller doesn't suffer Stray Flurge during movement, ever. This means that historically, Controller has been able to maintain smoother lines and better flow in its movement at the cost of not being able to tap strafe. And Keyboard has suffered in this manner. But what if we had a way around that? Enter No Lurch Movement Tech. Titanfall 2 is undergoing yet another movement revolution now that, thanks to the efforts of Runner Fizzy, we have methods of removing strafe lurch when needed in every single scenario. This tech was largely the reason that this tutorial is being made, so let's get started from the top. First things first, we have the No Lurch Double Jump, or NLDJ. This allows you to continue strafing in either direction during an aerial maneuver without incurring a lurch. To do a No Lurch Double Jump, you press the direction opposite to the one you're currently using. So if you're going right and pressing D, you'd press A to go left, vice versa, and you press Jump at the same time as that input. Upon releasing one of the directional inputs, you can continue to strafe in either direction smoothly. This works for continuing a long strafe in a single direction, or alternating the direction you're traveling. No Lurch Double Jumps are still being implemented into routes, but they will likely be used everywhere. The routing potential for smooth, tight lines when you remove Lurch is huge, and they can be thrown in in almost any scenario. I've personally already routed them into a number of different routes, including this example from the end of Hellroom during an All Helmets run. Arguably the most important use of No Lurch tech comes from interactions with the wall. No Lurch wall jumps and wall kicks, uh, and these are specifically referred to as strafe kicks, are essential to smooth lines and long distance tricks, but also come with considerable nuance. We'll start with wall jumps. To perform a No Lurch wall jump, or NLWJ, you need to hold inward toward the wall while pressing W or forward to wall run. Upon jumping from the wall, you release the forward input as soon as you can, and begin strafing in the held direction. This allows you to strafe after a wall jump without suffering a strafe lurch. You can also do a no lurch wall jump holding away from the wall. This almost always gives you a force end boost as well, but the timing for holding away isn't as lenient. As well, you need to be approaching the wall at a sharp enough angle so that the game won't nudge you away from the wall before you can touch it, which is very easy when you're holding away from it. If you want to do a no lurch wall jump while holding away, it's easiest if you hold both forward and away before you touch the wall, rather than just holding away by itself. And that brings us to no lurch wall kicks, or strafe kicks for short. Strafe kicks are essential to high level Titanfall gameplay, and they can be performed in a variety of ways. Something to keep in mind with any sort of strafe kick is that you need to be holding forward before you make contact with the wall. If you're holding a strafe key individually, you're not going to really get any distance out of it. So to initiate a strafe kick, uh, you hold forward and you also hold toward or away from the wall before you touch it. And then you perform the wall kick as soon as you make contact with the wall. Then you release W and strafe in a direction after. With this, you won't suffer strafe lurch, and it's by far the easiest way to perform strafe kicks, but it does have a couple downsides. When you're preemptively holding toward a wall, the game will kind of suck you into the wall earlier than it normally would if you were just holding forward with no lateral directional input, and thusly you'll touch the wall sooner and be stuck with an earlier launch point. Uh, this might not seem like much, but it's extremely important in scenarios where you want distance to jump from a wall at the latest possible point. As well, you'll find that the wall kick timing itself will change in certain scenarios because you'll be pulled toward the wall quicker if you press in toward the wall when you're already a little close to it. The alternate method to strafe kick is performed by pressing in toward the wall ideally one to three ticks before you make contact. This input order is a bit more complicated as you need to be holding forward and then you press in right before contact and then you do the wall kick. And then of course right after the wall kick you need to release W but hold the strafe key and continue the strafe. So it gets a little complicated, you're, you're pressing a lot of buttons all at once. It definitely took me a while to learn and I would say my worst habit with this is I still hold W for too long before the strafe, especially if I'm doing a strafe to the right for whatever reason. And another final thing to mention is that you cannot press the strafe key and the jump input at the same time. Uh, for whatever reason, the game will kind of nudge you in the direction that you're pressing without actually giving you a proper strafe or wall jump arc. It's very frustrating. While this will take the longest to learn, the results from this sort of strafe kick are definitely the most noticeable. 
you can actually combine both no lurch wall jumps and strafe kicks with an intentional strafe lurch. Sometimes lurch can be useful for a certain line or really a plethora of different scenarios. And using no lurch wall tech before tapping and lurching provides the most minimal speed loss as illustrated here by Zweek. Speaking of Zweek, I'm actually going to have him make a guest appearance here to teach you about a combination of two different pieces of tech we've covered today, uh, forced end boosts and no lurch wall jumps, which fuse to form no lurch forced end boosts or forced end boosts lurchless? We call them Febbles for short. Hello, hi, it's me, your friendly neighborhood uh, person. So in order to do a lurchless forced end boost, you need to strafe both away from and back to the wall in a pretty short time frame while you're still on the wall and then jump. A regular forced end boost works by strafing away from the wall and then timing a jump for the best possible boost. After the strafe input, there is a short time frame in which you still stick to the wall before falling off. And this is roughly the time frame you have to input your second strafe. So the timing for your strafes is fairly generous since you can just tap the strafe key away from the wall and then quickly strafe back. The timing for the jump is really the important part, since, like a regular forced end boost, the later you jump, the stronger the boost you're gonna get. Thank you, Zweek! Now, this brings us to some of the more nitty-gritty niche stuff. We'll begin with circle jumps. Yeah, circle jumps! It's a bit of a misnomer, but it does somewhat describe what's going on, so the name sticks. In order to achieve a no lurch jump, uh, when you're beginning a slide hop string from a grounded state, you need to be holding forward and a strafe direction before jumping, then releasing forward and continuing the strafe in the held direction. You'll generally be sprinting in a diagonal direction when you begin this before doing the strafe, so this is about as close to traditional circle jumps as we get in Titanfall, even if they aren't true. Another method to remove lurch is called No Lurge Jump Start, or NLJS. This specific input order will be used for a lot of the other niche stuff, but we'll begin with this. Uh, you begin by holding three different inputs, uh, left, right, and forward, and then releasing forward and one of the lateral directions and beginning a strafe. This removes the need to run diagonally like you do with circle jumps, but is a bit more frustrating input order. This same input order can be used to remove lurch in a variety of different scenarios and strats. Here are a few examples. And that is your guide for advanced Titanfall movement tech in 2020 and beyond. Uh, I really sincerely hope this video was helpful to a lot of people. I've been getting a ton of questions about the no lurch tech since it is only a few months old. Uh, this game has really gone through a huge revolution in the last couple months, and I'm very happy to have all this information gathered in one spot. I want to give huge shout outs to uh, Fizzy and Sweek who have been doing a ton of stuff to help push this game to the next level. I'm oh, and Cash Mayo of course, and Cash Mayo. Um, I'm very excited to see where Titanfall goes, and uh, I hope you guys have a really sick rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching and for playing and supporting Titanfall. Uh, take it easy. Peace.